Stitchless TV. Now, today on Stitchless TV, as promised, I'm going to show you a really easy way to drape a sleeve to put on to a sleeveless dress or top. I learnt this method of draping a, a sleeve from Shingo and we have a full tutorial very in-depth on how to do a moulage, which is like draping, um, how to do a draped sleeve, a long draped sleeve that gets added to a jacket bodice. Now I'll put the link below to that tutorial but today we're just doing a simple, really simple short sleeve. Because I don't know, are you like me? I'm not. Look, all my tops have short sleeves to about here because I don't like the tops of my arms. So you'll see today that this is, I think, an easy way to drape a sleeve. Now, to begin with, the first thing that you need to do is to take your bicep, 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 bicep <laughs> measurement. Now, don't just take it like this, squash it and make it as fat as possible. So when I do that, my measurement there is 13. So that means that the tube of our sleeve isn't going to be, th oh it's inches, 13 inches. So that's my biggest measurement up here. Now we can't create the sleeve to be 13 because then there'll be no movement at all. So we need to make it at least 14, maybe even 14 and a half because it's a sleeve block. Now, if once you've made this sleeve and you feel like, you know, it has got a bit of movement, but it's too boring, the style, then later on you can go in and you can slash up your block and splay it out and create gathers on the top. You can do all sorts of things. So for the moment, what I'm working with is my bicep. Has it got a T? My bicep? My big measurement, my big fat army measurement, um, being 13 centimetres. Ah, oh, one more measurement. So, take your bicep measurement and also, just roughly, okay, because it's going to be more than this, just roughly measure from the top where the shoulder is very roughly, and you're going to do it a bit more, down to where the armpit is. Mine actually finishes at six and a half. I'm going to call it seven and a half. So that's just a rough measurement of knowing how high up the arch of our sleeve needs to be. So we're just doing uh, short sleeves today, so just forget about the length at the moment. But what we do need to think about is that bicep measurement, which when it was fitted was 13 on me. Now, I need ease and I need to be able to move my arm. So I'm going to cut uh, a sleeve that is 15 and a half wide. So I want you to measure out the same, do the same thing with your bicep measurement. And I know I should have a ruler, but we're just creating a rough rectangle based on that measurement. Then we measured seven and a half down, didn't we, for the armpit measurement. But that was just rough. So let's, let's just make it nine. So I'm going to measure nine and draw a line 
coming across like that. So that's going to be where the armpit, I hate that word, <laughs> that's where the armpit falls. This down here will be the actual sleeve and then up here will be where we'll shape the sleeve afterwards. Now you don't even need to do any measurements. You, you, the only one that you really, I'd say need, actually need to do is that bicep measurements. All these other things you can just do as you go along if you're not happy with numbers. Now the other thing that we need is, so we said that that was 15 and a half. We need a line that kind of goes down the middle as well. So I fold my tape to find the middle because I can't be bothered to do that calculation. <clears throat> and then I just, you know, I just want a line that goes down the middle. So this part here is the sleeve. That's where the armpit falls, and this is where we're going to shape it afterwards. So just cut that out. Fold it over, line up those armpitty bits, and I'm just going to sew from the armpit line, coming down here with a half A half inch seam allowance and I'm just going to go straight down. I know normally we would shape the sleeve but we're more concerned at the moment with doing everything else. Now when you sew this, sew it with a big stitch because you might need to undo it later. Right, so when you've finished sewing up the side then put it into this position. We're trying to put that in the middle. So just follow the line that you drew that formed like the centre of the tube of your sleeve. And then just lay it out like this. Now I've actually made this wider than the sleeve I made before because I was concerned it was a bit tight. And now I'm concerned it's a bit big. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what, which one's the best afterwards. When you've taken um, the bodice off the dummy, we just need to unpick the shoulder seam because we need to get into this area here. Now that should be easy because when you sh sew, and when you sewed, your bodice sloper, otherwise known as a bodice block, um, you are, you were and are supposed to use very big stitches for your seams for this reason so that you can open it out easily so I've undone the shoulder and then you do this then put your fabric wrong sides together <laughs> so wrong sides together I'm matching up the side seam of my bodice with the side seam of this sleeve I'm making sure that the armpit goes into the armpit and I'm just going to see where this naturally falls. Now when Shingo does it he says it's just kind of rough just to give you an idea of the shape and of the size. So if I leave this like this then that's obviously not going to do anything or go anywhere. So I do need to move it out a little bit like that and the same for the front. Now what I would say is so you're gonna you're gonna trace this out now this is my back so I'm gonna put a couple of notches there and the same on the sleeve and then I just let that go off for the moment and then I'll do the same for the front one there and then I just let that go off because I don't know where it's going to go. 
Then put your bodice to one side and just start cutting up that. So following the line, just cut all of that away. When you've done that, it should look a bit like that. Now I think it's probably safe for us to cut away this stuff, in fact we can probably go down. So you'll end up with this. Now for the rest of this, we will shape it on the actual dummy to find out what shape this needs to be here to fit into our armhole. But before that, you're gonna to have to close that shoulder. The one that you just unpicked, you need to sew up the shoulder. This is what we have. We've stitched up the shoulder. And we have the tube of the sleeve. Now the sleeves that I'm doing today, they're definitely not going to be that long. I'm just going to cut off something like that. So what we need to do is we need to put that sleeve the right way round. Before we put it onto the dummy, we're going to line up the side seams and line up the notches and just just pin it to the armhole on here with right sides together so when you pin a sleeve you usually pin inside inside there so that you'll be able to manage the gathers up there but it's basically from that notch going around there so that on this side it looks like that and now we're going to put it on the dummy because we're going to see how to fit this part <clears throat> okay I really need for you to see what I'm doing here so so that's the one that we did before and I was just slightly concerned I mean I know that there are other ways in which I can rectify this issue but in terms of making it a little bit bigger now um, yeah we'll see so we've pinned it so we've pinned it around there between those notches right and hoping you can see this so now what we do is obviously we've got loads too much fabric but if we just let it hang down naturally now it is actually really important to have an arm in there <laughs> and I haven't got one in there right now but I think I can sort of guess so this line won't necessarily fall in line with the uh, shoulder so don't make it do that now I'm just going to put a pin in the top just to hold it because I, I want to cut away this because I can see that I don't need I don't need all of that so I'm going to cut that away for now because it will make my life easier so you just start to have a look to see how you can make the sleeve fit now when you use calico you can sort of see through it so you can see like if I go like that I can see the edge of my um, armhole underneath so if I go a little bit there so just start to have a look now whether you pin it I don't want to pull it you mustn't pull it too much there you see, you'll be doing this with an arm, hopefully. So I'm able to stick it, my pins into a 
haven't got any more pins, <laughs> into the shoulder pad, which is another good reason for using shoulder pads, because you can treat them like a pin cushion. So I'm sort of happy about that. Now where I'm sticking my pins is kind of like the seam allowance of the underside away. But then I need a seam allowance again. I guess that's quite important. So, so when you're fairly happy with how it's going on, I would say start drawing a line for where that is. But then remember, you you need to cut a seam allowance. So I know that that's not perfect, but I think it's enough for now. So what you then do, you take this off, cut away all your excess. And then we do the easing stitch where you sew with your largest stitch and you well, you don't gather, you sort of ease to make it fit the armhole and then you'll know if it has worked or not. So take it off and have a look at what you've got. So that was my original line, so I imagine that I'll just gradually bring it to that seam allowance line. Now it is hard to get this as a perfect sleeve the first time you do it. So don't be surprised if it isn't completely perfect like my first one. Now remember this isn't this isn't the center, okay? But I could have marked where the shoulder was, but I forgot. So we are now going to, using, using the largest stitch, we're going to sew around here, the seam allowance away, going down to there, which is near our notches. Um, and then we're going to ease it, hopefully, to fit our armhole. So look, I was right. It, it was too big. <laughs> I should have stuck to my original measurements and made it just one and a half inches bigger than my actual bicep size. So that's why we make twirls, <laughs> so that we adjust and adjust until they fit and then we have the perfect size. Okay, that all seems to fit nicely with the easing on the top. Now where I took it in, I need to um, just round it off a bit, because otherwise you just end up with a peak there. So now we sew that all in place. For those that don't know, when you do a set in sleeve and you're stitching around the, the gathers, but they're not gathers, they're just easing, so that you don't get little pleats, you have to really sew exactly, exactly, or just a tiny bit to the left of that stitch line that was the line that you slightly gathered. Stroke ease. Now, it's not the end of the world if you get tiny, tiny little pleats. You might be able to steam them out, but really, you're not supposed to. So when you've finished your sleeve, you do need to press it. And I don't know how anybody, I'm not trying to sell this because I don't, don't even own them. Um, although I do know where you can get them from. Um, yeah, how can you press the shoulder inset sleeve without a ham? I don't know how you would do it. In fact, I didn't even get my ironing board out. I just used my hand. 
So, let's talk about this. So, honesty, my first sleeve was better than my second sleeve. So, because I thought maybe my first sleeve was too tight, but it wasn't tight, it was perfect actually, um, because it is the block. On the block, everything is meant to be like a replica review with a tiny bit of ease. Um, so when I did the second one, I made it too wide for the armhole. So there we go. So that's the sleeve that I just did. Also, you should all be really shouting at me. Because how on earth can I show you how to drape a sleeve block without an arm in there? That is a bit silly. But when you do it, you will have an arm in there or you'll have something stuffed in there, maybe. But anyway, so that looks okay, doesn't it? So I'll show you the back. So that's the back, which looks nice around the armhole. Ouch! Which looks nice around the armholes. Now, if you do want to do it longer, go watch that video, how to moulage drape a sleeve block because there's lots of valuable information in there because what I was going to say to you was if you did find it a bit tight around here because the important part is to make your sleeve fit nicely into your armhole this stuff is the easy bit and I'm almost tempted to do it now shall I do it now uh, I won't do it now <laughs> but you can slash up into there, spread it apart, put a piece of calico behind, add loads of masking tape. Okay, so that will give you more, more fullness in that area there. And then if you don't like it being, then if you don't like it being too wide at the bottom here, then you do what you should probably do anyway, which is to make it go in at an angle here. But that way you get more fullness there. Thank you so much for watching. I am aware that my dummy's on the other side now. Um, now, I feel that in another video, I don't just want to do bodice slopers and bodice blocks all the time. I'm going to get bored. But I, I've got a feeling in, the, in another video, you want to know, well, what do we do with these bodice blocks? How... How do we use them? How, how do we change them? So my question today is, do you want to know how I would use a bodice block? Comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Go and watch all our other films of how to do draping and what to do with it. Or just go and watch all our other films. And feel free to share our videos with your sewing and fashiony friends. Thank you so much for watching and see you again very soon. Bye.